uh, all the details and the facts about what's going on in Bahrain and ended with uh, very beautiful recommendations that we uh, highly appreciate and hope that they get uh, you know, uh, done, hopefully. Uh, my presentation will uh, focus um, partly on the whole group and partly on my husband, Ibrahim Sharif. And uh, I will give an assessment uh, of the current situation in Bahrain, whether things have been changing or getting worse. Uh, well, these are the group of 13. Um, this guy the, in the corner there, he was with them, but he was released. Uh, he was given only six. He, he spent more over a, over a year in prison, although his sentence should have been six months. So he stayed more in prison and uh, he was released. So they became from 14, they became 13. Uh, of course, all of you know the background and uh, what started, uh, you know, all of this vi uh, violence and violations in Bahrain. Uh, the activists are all political leaders. They are HR, uh, human rights activists and scholars. Mm -hmm. We have to stress this because the government uh, now is saying, the government and it's all, you know, machinery and tools. They are saying that we don't have any political prisoners. These are criminals who have done crimes and they have to spend the, what they deserve in prison. Uh, these 13 political leaders are opposition, are opposition figures. They are human rights activists and scholars. And they have always been stressing peaceful, peaceful and public activity. Uh, they were sentenced, all of them, to, to yeah, any uh, sentences from uh, 5 to 25 years. The, B, the Biki report referred to them as a group, the group of 14 political leaders. And even with that description, with all the beautiful recommendations of the Biki report, that the king uh, agreed, uh, after that they were all nullified and none of them were truly uh, implemented. Um, the, the 13 represent varied political and intellectual schools of thought. And this is a common thing in our country they always collect people from different, uh, you know, uh, different uh, schools of thought or, or, or directions, and then they, they put them in a scenario and they say they are criminals. Uh, the common denom denominator among all these figures is that they are opposition figures. They, they, have, they are opposing the political system and they have their views to uh, advance the, do the democratic situation and true political participation for the Bahraini people. The charges that uh, they laid down for the, for the group, uh, the first one, the formation of a group with the intent to overthrow the country's constitution, attempting to topple the monarchy using force, disturbing the law, impairing private liberties of citizens, preventing the state's institutions from performing their functions, undermining national unity, and, and of course there are many, many more victim, um, accusations. This is a recent picture of uh, some of them. Uh, Ibrahim is in the middle, right there. And uh, this picture was taken by Human Rights Watch and uh, it created uh, huge support uh, among, the, among the Bahraini you know, people outside. And the government after that started uh, putting sanctions on them. So we, ha we are now, uh, we don't have any visits. It has been, it's been four and a half months. They are not allowed uh, any medical treatment. They are not allowed uh, <coughs> buying, buying, you know, necessary uh, things from the prison, uh, you know, shop. Uh, and of course, the, the most important thing is that they they have been denied their med their medical rights for to get treatment. And most of them have illnesses, have uh, ailing medical conditions that we will talk about in a bit more detail. This is me and the Khadija is with me. Uh, this was the last, uh, you know, uh, visit to to Jao prison uh, on the 15th of uh, June. And uh, we every time, every two weeks we go there, we stand for like 20 minutes. Uh, we talk to the lieutenant. Uh, we uh, show our, you know, uh, disapproval of, of all of that. We, we talk to them that these are prisoners of conscience. And uh, the news uh, spreads all around in Bahrain and nothing changes. So this is, this is our routine for the last four and a half months. Uh, the, the, the seventh uh, visit, uh, the picture uh, on the top, and the eighth uh, visit that was denied, the, the last one on the 15th of June. 
Even uh, Navi Pillai herself uh, described the political figures as political prisoners, as prisoners of uh, conscience. And she admitted, well, she said, especially the, the reliance on confessions extra extracted under torture. So this has been documented. This has been talked about uh, uh, at the United Nations level. It has been talked about in the Beaker Report. Yet nothing was to change for that group. That group, that group was targeted. Uh, it was designed that they stay inside jail for as long as the government can keep them there and torture them and you know abuse them as much as it can. All these reputed organizations have mentioned, have talked about in detail about the uh, prisoners of conscious case and uh, uh, until now they are in jail. The, the, the thing is that they are still in jail. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a picture from a report that Amnesty issued in uh, January 2013 and uh, uh, they they made some they, they made interviews with this this uh, six or seven uh, that that their pictures are posted. Uh, the 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 report uh, has a very beautiful uh, you know uh, title. Freedom has a price, and it was taken from from an interview that uh, one of the members did with uh, my husband. I think she was Kova. Let's go over. Uh, let's see the sentences. Uh, seven of seven activists are sentenced to life. Mr. Hassan Ali Mshema, Mr. Abdul Jalil Abdullah uh, Singais, Sheikh uh, Saeed Mirza Nouri, of course, Mr. Abdul Hadil Khawaja, uh, Mr. Abdul Wahab Hussein Ahmed, and Mr. Abdul Sheikh Abdul Jalil Radi Al Maqdad, and Sheikh Muhammad Habib Al Maqdad. These are all sentenced to life. Why? Because they dare to speak out their political views. And these other four activists are sentenced to 15 years. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Hadi Al Mkhodar, Abdul Hadi Al Mkhodar, Sheikh Abdullah Isa Al Mahrous, Mr. Muhammad Ali Radi, and Mr. Muhammad Hassan Jawad. His, his son, Mr. Jawad, the, his son was denied visa. He, he, he could not come here, he could not come attend. Uh, this is my husband, Ibrahim Sharif, on the left-hand side, and this is Mr. Salah Al-Khawaja, brother of Mr. Abdul Hadi Al-Khawaja. They are both sentenced to five years. This is a leaflet that we did uh, with very brief information, uh, you know, about the whole uh, the, the whole thirteen of the, the thirteen of them. You can you have can some idea. Bit, yeah. Sure. The activists were subjected to torture. They were subjected to torture, mm -hmm. as was described by Mr. Tajer and uh, Dr. Falah. All these uh, abuses, the verbal abuse, of course, it was worse uh, for the other, the Shia figures. Uh, Ibrahim was always sad because he said, I got less verbal abuse because I'm Sunni. Because they were Shia, they had much more abuse because they were always cursing the, the sect and you know the, uh, the political, the religious figures. The, there were electro electrocutions, uh, sleep deprivation, sexual harassment, solitary confinement, burning with cigarettes, blindfolding and handcuffing, <laughs> threats of rape and actual rape, standing for pro prolonged <laughs> periods of time. As uh, Mr. Tajer said, Ibrahim was forced to stand for long, long times and uh, he had to take like tablets for his knee that was uh, seriously injured for eight months. And when the first time the, the lawyer saw him, first time the, the lawyer saw him, he was limping. He was not uh, walking properly. And uh, now he, has, he suffers from a condition that we doubt uh, would be the frozen shoulder. He cannot raise his arm up uh, all the way because of the, you know, the severe torture that was used. Uh, punching and beating with rubber hoses, and wires, the torturers and were safe. They felt that they could do anything they wanted and they would get away with it. Uh, 60 cases of torture were documented in the Biki report. Among them is Ibrahim Sharif's testimony, Abdul Hadi Khawaja's testimony, and the rest. The whole group's uh, testimony is there. This is the testimony of, uh, of Ibrahim Sharif. Uh, well, anybody who's interested can read later. Um, we, we heard their testimonies in court. They were lengthy ones. They, they allowed them to speak about the torture that they went through at the very last stage. 
And we said maybe uh, uh, telling these testimonies might change something at the end in the verdicts, but the verdicts came a copy of the, verse of, of, uh, the, f the first verdicts that were handed down by the military uh, courts at, the, at their both levels. Uh, Mr. Abdul Hadi Al-Khawaji and Mr. Muhammad Al-Maqdad, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Maqdad, I think got the, the worst deals. They, got, they had the, the worst package of uh, torture. Mr. Muhammad Al-Maqdad, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Maqdad was, was in prison before he was uh, out uh, f f uh, during February events. And he has gone through another, you know, a previous cycle of torture. So uh, when he saw his, his, uh, his head for the first time in a mirror, he was uh, amazed of the number of, you know, scars and uh, injuries that he had in his, uh, in his head. And of course, everybody knows about Al Khawaja's uh, injury and the fracturing of his jaw, and Khadija can elaborate more on that later. Um, I read the redress report, and many people uh, read that in Bahrain, and uh, I think it's very, uh, it's very accurate. They know that torture is a deep-rooted practice. They, they know that uh, from the Henderson era, Henderson got away with it. Uh, Henderson trained many students in Bahrain. They are now in, in uh, big places. They are in high uh, you know, positions, and they are teaching the same cycle of torture to others. So we don't have accountability. We have a cycle of torture uh, handed down to now, you know, uh, people from Pakistan, from Yemen, from uh, for all these different countries, because they have money, they can afford it. The government can afford it. We had martyrs uh, since this, the 70s and earlier in the 50s, 80s and 90s. Um, uh, of course, the torture, as the, the report says, the torture little bit decreased uh, during what they say that uh, what, is what was called the reform era in the early 2000s, but it came back uh, in, in uh, more in uglier ways, in uh, you know deeper dimensions, and uh, uh, everywhere. So now torture, we are really de dealing with a worsening situation. Not, not any reforms as, as they claim. So what reforms? Reforms did not deal with past violations. Decree 53 pardoned all torturers. They are in, in better places. They get better money. Uh, post BICI, the obligations not met. And we have super, superficial legislative, structural, institutional changes. They are all superficial. They are costing uh, people a lot of money. With, uh, with more torture and more violations. And uh, all this previous work that was done to, do, uh, to implement the, the Biki report, it was just paper, it was only PR, PR, uh, you know, uh, propaganda by the, by the, by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, they are issuing papers and papers and reports, but on the ground we feel things are uh, going the other, the other side. Uh, the main important issue is that accountability and punishment of offenders has not been, did not start yet. Officers responsible for <laughs> grave violations, including torturing prisoners of conscience to death, remain free. Some of them who were convicted to seven years, their, vic their verdict was reduced to six months, and maybe it will not be you know, implemented. Maybe he will be let out by, uh, if he pays some money. Uh, Inspector General's Office and Minister, uh, Ministry of Interior's um, Ombudsman have not discouraged ongoing police brutality. Police brutality is becoming another source of torture. It's, it's, uh, it's so grave, it's so uh, vast, it so, uh, you know, covers all uh, villages. So this is an area that has added to the, to the situation. Uh, we have this, the National Mechanism for Accountability, the Special Investigation Unit. This Special Investigation Unit, well, it should have been independent, but uh, nothing is independent in our country. And uh, they, when they heard that uh, Mr. Joan Mendez would be coming to Bahrain, uh, they told the group of 13 that the, we will come and visit you. Uh, they talked to five of them. And then they said, but you are not wearing your uniform, so uh, you have to wear the, the uniforms. 
they said, and we cannot talk to you because our lawyers are not here. So they said, okay, we will go and we will come another time. The second visit never happened. The lawyers went to the, to the prison. They were ready to uh, you know, talk to the uh, SIU guys. Nobody showed up because the decision was made that Mandez would not be attending Bahrain. Uh, the 176 <coughs> recommendations that uh, were uh, handed down to, to the government uh, in Geneva, they, the government said, okay, we, will, we support 143 fully and 13 partially, but uh, nothing in reality happened you know, as it should have been. It's just uh, creating uh, units, uh, putting people there, but uh, keeping the current situation as it is. An uh, Istanbul Protocol, there is a lot of call, a lot, a lot of talk about Istanbul Protocol, but uh, the protocol that goes on is the same old school, the same old guards. And they talk about uh, training, they talk about expensive, you know, uh, visits, but nothing is tangible on, on, in real life. Uh, the standing independent uh, examination body, well, uh, it's not considered uh, 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 independent, it's not accredited by international related bodies, and um, even when they they issued lately they issued one statement uh, uh, protesting the you know spreading the photos of some uh, ac detainees, and when they did that the government said no it was okay uh, to to do that there is nothing in the law that uh, does not allow that it's okay to spread the photos of you know, people who will be convicted uh, at the end. Uh, we have this, uh, the MOI, Minister, Ministry of uh, Interior, Independent Office of the Inspector General. This Major General Habib al Ghaith, Inspector General and Under Secretary of MOI, he is the father of Badr Ghaith, who, who fractured the jaw of uh, Mr. Abdul Hadi Khawaja. He is the General uh, Inspector, so did he, did he uh, sit down with his uh, son to put him accountable? No. Uh, we have Nawaf al Maouda, Ombudsman for Ministry of Interior, Department of Internal Affairs, Con Code of Conduct, and Handbook of Duties and Procedures for Arresting Suspects. There are still, there is no warrant for arrest. There are house raids. There are people who are been taken, you know, in bunches and being tortured in. Uh, uh, unofficial places and so on. Uh, because of this picture, because of the Human Rights Watch, uh, you know, uh, putting this picture, these pictures on, on its website, we have been denied the family visitation, the medical treatment. They have been denied the medical treatment. And the access to the to hygiene items has been very, very limited now. Maybe they will, you know, take, take, take those also. Uh, internal purchasing in the prison is also uh, I would just like to a little bit uh, talk about the deteriorating uh, health conditions of, of, of all of them. Uh, Sheikh al mukhover was denied medical treatment after complaining of severe abdominal pain. Due to, due, due to their persistence, the author authorities agreed. When he was examined, it was discovered that he had you know, an appendix, and if it wasn't removed, it, he could have died in jail because of the, you know, the ill treatment and the denial of their rights. Uh, of course, the medical condition of Mr. Mashema is known to everybody. Uh, he has lymphoma. He he needs to see his own doctors because he cannot trust the the kind. And he has not been, you know, given the, the proper treatment. Not uh, allowed to go out. And his son may be, can can elaborate more on that. Uh, Mr. Abdul uh, also medical condition deteriorated. Um, um, he ag again he was denied any medical attention. Same thing applies to Dr. Jalil Singhis, Ibrahim Sharif, who I talked about his condition the, of the uh, frozen shoulder, Mr. Al Khawaja's of course condition, and Muhammad Muhammad J. Perwiz, who complains a lot uh, about the pain in his uh, chest, ears, and legs, especially the legs. Uh, Mr. Juan Mendez's uh, proposed visits were postponed once, and they were it was cancelled the second time. We, we can we can say it was cancelled because there was no alternative date. Uh, 
there's an interesting idea that Mr. Mendez talks about uh, is that the denial of treatment is, is a continuation of torture. It's uh, described beautifully in his statement, uh, in his report. And uh, it says, um, in a nutshell, when the state is aware of the severe pain, when no treatment is offered, and when the government has failed to take all reasonable steps to protect individuals' physical and mental integrity, if this all exists, then, there is, then the torture continues. And we consider the torture is continuous now on the group of, 30, of, the group of 13, because this condition is, is loud and clear uh, in their case. Uh, the redress report conclusion is, we, I agree uh, totally with that. The, the history is repeating itself in Bahrain. Reforms are introduced to limit the use of torture and ill treatment and detention without, however, properly addressing past violations. It's always, they are always escaping uh, to, you know, ahead, but there is no uh, treatment and there is no, uh, nothing, nothing is done, no accountability. Several recommendations include amending laws to prevent torture as well as to highlight the protocol when addressing allegations, other institutional reforms. Institutional reforms is a kind of dream in Bahrain and uh, messages to the international police. protests. Police says police's current use of force is not necessary, proportional or justified in policing protests. Um, I don't know, maybe Mr. Tajer can elaborate more on the sentences of uh, the cases of people killed, the martyrs killed in jails under torture. Uh, most of the, you know, torturers were acquitted or, uh, so the, 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 ju the judiciary does not help. There is no accountability. Uh, brutality is, 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 is going on and it's becoming more severe. So we are in, in a worse situation than this is uh, Mr. Farhan. This is Ahmed Farhan. The, well, the picture says it all, what, what, what they did to his uh, skull. And, uh, and still nothing, nothing. Uh, Nobody, held nobody's, nobody was held accountable for, for that. It's, this says it all about the situation in Bahrain. Thank you very much. Thank you.